Hey guys, just gonna do a test lather right now and gonna use this brush for the first time. This is a 30 millimeter Macedo shaving available via eBay as far as I know. That's the only way to get their stuff. Um, it's been used a good many times, but it sure didn't really look like it. It doesn't have a lot of splay, you know, a lot of opening up, that sort of thing. Uh, but it is their finest badger. Finest is a code word, uh, not a, a normal adjective. It's not their best badger, their, their nicest badger, but when we say finest. Uh, and it's two band. We see the dark, a, a big dark band here, and then the lighter right there. Um, I've got a three band just to illustrate the opposite. This is a three band. It's a silver tip. And this is one from Golden Nib. And you can see how it's got a narrower black band here. And so you definitely see plenty of the light color. Uh, and then light color here, light color here, and then the, the third band there. Uh, so this is different. The hairs in this type of knot usually have more backbone. And the, uh, the tips are often bleached or treated in some type of way that softens them up from their normal uh, state. And so the, this is advantage, advantageous for people who like a higher backbone than many of the silver tips offer. They offer these wonderful soft tips on top of the brush, but the backbone of the bristles sometimes makes it to where they just kind of lay around and don't really scrub at you very much. And there are definitely guys who like some of that scrub. They like those tips to be focused at their face, you know, that sort of thing. And so that's why the finest uh, has stepped into the uh, brush arena and uh, they've been around for a while. We're going to lather up. This is kind of my um, soap that I have here in the, the bathroom for test lathers and uh, just for whenever I feel like it and I'm going to use that now. Um, here is the uh, dry puck. You can see it's cracked a little bit. I don't use it a lot. I'm just going to put a little water on it for just a second and then uh, I am going to get this brush nice and wet. I don't, I am going to go ahead and uh, put the lather on my face because part of this experience is finding out how the brush feels um, when using it. It might have too much backbone for me. I like the silver tips, but I like a little bit more backbone than many of the silver tips provide uh, on occasion. And so I'm looking forward to trying this guy out. So uh, we've got him very wet right now. And so we'll shake some of that water out. So he's um, had uh, 10 minutes of soaking, maybe five, uh, seven, seven to 10 minutes of soaking. And that, that does matter for a few badgers out there. And they're usually the finest or the ones that have been had treated tips because since those treated tips are weakened, uh, in many cases, they can actually absorb the water, especially the knots where the tips will gel. Because obviously, if it's a tip that's going to gel, then that means it's not going to just repel water. It's going to absorb water into the tip so that it can become like a tiny little sponge. Okay, so... Uh, since the with, so with most finest badger brushes, I like to make sure I uh, or treated brushes, I like to make sure that I give them a little bit of soak time, like uh, 15 minutes in some cases. All right, so we've got a wet puck here. Let's just load it for uh, 60 seconds. 52 is a wonderful number to go by because it's the number of cards in a deck. So we'll just use that. The tips are probably going to be very soft. I can feel that with my hands after the brush got wet. And so I, uh, so the backbone is really the only thing. And it's 30 millimeter brush. You know, they're not, there are some bigger brushes, but in terms of brushes that the average guy might use, the 30 millimeter is, is usually about as big as it gets. Um, and I don't really need a big splay with a 30 millimeter brush because I've got this goatee right here. Now let's see. Okay, that was about 40. Let's do a couple more seconds. I think that's kind of 45 seconds um, or something like that. Uh, should be plenty. All right. Wash off the, the soap tub here. And with the ceramic, which I love, the old soaps that give you a nice cool ceramic type tin. 
uh, or container tub. I really like those, but this one's very slippery, so taking adequate precautions with that. All right, so I did whip out my Roger Quintero bowl here, and let's just see what happens. I can feel, I can feel the stiffness. A lot of times with the, uh, and I mentioned that it was a larger brush just because many times the, the size of the brush will contribute to the backbone almost as much as the actual strength of the individual fibers themselves because when they're next to each other it's like a multiplication effect. So after just a little bit of scrubbing we've got kind of an early early lather and we can start adding water. And this lather is made with hard water. And I do want to you know, get it nice and put it on my face. Get it to my normal consistency. Not really a, I don't want to do a kind of fake consistency or a something thicker than I might normally use. Because that'll give me a false impression of the brush's feel. If you have a brush with prickly tips, you can mix it a little drier, add a little bit less water than you think. And sometimes that will help to mask the prickliness of the brush. Sometimes that's handy for bores as you're breaking them in because sometimes it takes them a little while to, uh, you know, a week or two or in the case of some omegas, a, a year or three to, uh, to get soft, you know, and enjoyable. So a big, uh, I'm guessing this guy's going to be kind of scrubby with all of its backbone. Some people like to use brushes like this to kill soaps because you end up having to load a lot of lather. A lot of soap on your on your brush I mean it's wasteful because if you don't need to use that much then I mean they're saying they're killing the soap but really they're just wasting a bunch of it the lathers looking even better as we go the density is very easily felt all right so now we have two teaspoons in let's do three Three teaspoons in the lather. And that might be where we stop. Looks like it's gonna be plenty of lather to, to do three passes. Of course, I'm just gonna lather once. Don't really need to do three. I like the Mitchell's Wolf Fat a lot. In addition to the cool vintage look of the ceramic tub, it's very slick. It's got lanolin in it. got a uh, just kind of a, a clean linen scent there's nothing punchy or, uh, or zesty about it just kind of a smooth clean type of laundry scent oh yeah look at that leather all right let's uh, kind of bring it up a little bit looks great visually but look at see how it's hanging on to that structure right there look at the way it's holding on to its shape now I can wiggle a little bit and you can see it with a little bit of elasticity. This is kind of a chubby handle too. It's uh, big and thick. It is short. I usually like a longer, oh, rinsing that soap off, rinsing that lather off of my fingers just now. I felt how slick it was. Man, that's a good, that's a good soap. That's why I have it. Mitchell's Wolf Fat will crack on you over time if you don't use it very much. And that's totally normal. You're not doing anything wrong. If you do start using it more regularly, the soap will expand and many of the cracks will probably disappear to a good extent. It is a truly hard soap, and so it's one of the few that I do uh, soak ahead of time for just, just a few minutes while I'm prepping my gear. And you don't have to, it just means you might need to load for a little bit longer. Oh yeah, we've got tons of lather here. Let's just feel, oh, that is so slick. That is good stuff. The contact slickness is just buttery and creamy all at once. And it is, you do see some, uh, some micro bubbles in there. So the presence of those little tiny, tiny bubbles doesn't mean 
that it's airy. Just means that's the way the lather was kind of designed to be. Other attributes determine whether it has an airy uh, feel to it or not, not just those bubbles. All right, let me get my, I should got my face wet earlier, but it's uh, fine. I may actually lather up twice because uh, I've got oily skin and so the first one might drive the drive the oil away. The second one may be a better feel, but to tell you the truth, I think my the uh, feel of the bristles hey, that's not bad. That's a lot better than I thought. It's not I'm not splaying it very much, but it is it's just it's so much in terms of uh, a lot in terms of stiffness, but the ends of of it are actually flexing pretty nicely. Uh, sometimes with such, uh, as you can see, much of the lather is, has gone away from the center. So one of the things you can do there is start a painting motion and then you can start working that again in the round shape and then paint and then round. You know, that's one way to go. Yeah, this is a comfortable brush. I like those soft tips and it will open up just a little bit more over time. The splay will increase just a little bit. But this is, and this may be what some people call the wall of badger where the tips of the brush are, are giving you the comfort and not the flex of the, of the bristles, of the hairs. Yeah, when I reverse direction, you can kind of see how the stiffness of the brush pushes my skin around a little bit. But I'll use this for a while and see. I do have a, a couple of 30 millimeter handles that I was hoping this knot would work well enough for. So yeah, it doesn't really work all that well in the splay. And of course, when the splay, what I mean is when you press it enough to get the, uh, to kind of get it to open up like that, it doesn't do that super easy. I'm not getting water in the brush. I'm put, I'm washing off the handle. Let's put a little more water in the center of the knot here. See what happens if we work the face a little bit like that. I didn't do my thing where I bring it down to the tips and so some of it kind of left on me there. See that is a terrific lather. I don't know, maybe sometime I might be in the mood for the, the big wall, might be my name for this guy, Fuzzy Wall. And it's good that he's big because a smaller brush that has this much stiffness, this much backbone, would, uh, uh, wouldn't give me as much of the tip contact. But since this one's big, you get a lot of tip contacting the skin, so you get a lot of comfort. You get a lot of good soft feels, even though it's got and a high backbone. Definitely a good brush for somebody who likes to shave and lather up using only the tips of the brush. My Macedo Finest uh, 24 millimeter, it has the Memphis handle and it is easy, uh, fairly easy display. So it's a different experience entirely, still has the same soft tips. I'm really glad to try out the 30 and I may very well keep it around. We'll give it some more uses and over time, you might start seeing it kind of open up a little bit. The more bristles it takes away from the center, uh, the more kind of flex you'll have, the more comfort you'll have. And that's definitely what I'm going for. Yeah, it is the same feel as my 24 millimeter finest. Um, in terms of the tips on my hands, very nice and soft. You will use up more soap with a brush like this. 
even if you're not trying to waste soap, like I mentioned before, but you'll just use up more because some of the lather has to stay inside the knot uh, so that uh, more can be on your face. You know, you're not going to be able to empty the knot all the way of lather. Um, but uh, it'll be interesting to face lather with it and see how that goes. As we can see, the bowl lather went great. Um, what le was left on the brush was uh, just fine, and I have a lot more here. So that, uh, you know, 40 seconds or whatever, I have 45, whatever I ended up using is, uh, was, is plenty. And it, oh, this is a good, a good lather. I'm happy to put this video online to get another good Mitchell's Wool Fat uh, video out there. And it is very, very slick. It's got a great, luxurious, creamy feel. It's, uh, there are other soaps that, that have nice slickness, but they don't have that, uh, that creamy feel to them. Um, uh, they feel airy when it's, when it's puffy, but then by the time you get down to the contact, it is slippery enough to do its job. And so in, the, in that sense, they're, they're good soaps, but this one takes it a, a step further and you get that contact slickness that will give your face protection from the razor but you also get that kind of luxurious, creamy comfort that, uh, that ticks all your other check boxes, at least mine. Wonderful, wonderful slick lather with a mild scent, so it's not gonna interfere with any uh, uh, aftershave. Now, another thing about these thick knots, you see I did some rinsing. There's obviously still some soap in there. The density here makes it a little harder to get soap out. I had been rinsing it with cold water. And so that's one of the reasons I bring in some warm because uh, to get these, to clean these quickly, quick-ish, you need to get some not cold water in play. So let me get doing that. And I'll, if I come back, I'll give you some summation remarks. All right, well, just as you see, a few of these bristles are starting to kind of get wild. That will gradually happen over the uses, uh, especially with me and the way I, I work brushes and are kind of vigorous with them. And so that will take away from some of the bristles that are in the center. I did strop this one on the towel. And so you can see kind of the density. It's a very dense brush. So if you like that, then this is maybe a good one for you. There's not a lot to go into your palm in terms of the handle, but it's big enough and I found it. Um, easily enough able to grip and control without excess fatigue uh, during my shave. So I was happy with that. This ridge here uh, did not, uh, like some of them, the pronounced ones, it didn't bother me in any way, you know, uh, poking into me or anything like that. So smells like uh, Mitchell's wool fat. And this one, we don't see any clumping tips. And so this one did not gel. I'm also pretty happy about that too. All right, well, I also, wanted to show you this lather. It has not dissipated at all. So that means we had a good lather consistency, the right amount of soap with the right amount of water. If you have lather that dissipates, like with Williams or, you know, really anything, if it's a good soap and it's dissipating, then you probably need to load a little bit more soap or add a little bit more water or both. All right. I, it's so funny with uh, Mitchell's Wolf Fat, I'll do test lathers and then I'll feel bad that I don't get to shave with it because the, it's, it's really a nice slick lather. I wouldn't be sad at all if that was the only soap that I had in my den. Uh, it's a good, it's good soap. Sure, I'd miss some smells, but it performs just so well and it's got a nice classic scent that, uh, that does get the, um, the shaving vibe going, the traditional shaving vibe, you know. So I'm happy about that. All right, I think it was about four teaspoons of water that I ended up using for today's shave and uh, about 45 seconds of loading, I think. And that was uh, probably five passes of lather, uh, maybe six. So uh, there's a good recommendation uh, with a big knot like that. There we go. All right, well, just a little test uh, shave. I'll clean up myself up a little bit more uh, after I cut away. But I uh, just hope that uh, helps you guys out there. Uh, Mitchell's Wool Fat. It's a good product. All right, now, um, it's available in the puck form as well as buying it with the ceramic 
uh, container. So you can go either way. If it's a little expensive for you, uh, the, the, it's, it is kind of expensive for the soap, but I tell you what, it lasts a very long time. And of course, that ceramic tub is going to last a couple of lifetimes. But even the soap itself, as a hard soap, it's going to give you many, many shaves. Uh, but if it's still hard on your budget, maybe just get the puck. If you're really interested in this soap, you can just get the refill puck, put it in any container you want, like a ramekin from a uh, from the Dollar Tree or something like that. It's also, as a hard soap, you can grate it with a cheese grater and then take those shavings, press them into any container that you want to use as a loading container. Uh, and so that's it's very flexible like that. It's also available, and where I got that tub is on the used market, like the Shave Bazaar on Reddit. That's a great place. And there's some other, buy, we call them BSTs, buy, sell, trade, at some various shave forums all around uh, the web. So there we go. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and I hope I helped you out a little bit today. Take care. Bye.